In hydraulics, flow control valves are used to control the volume of oil supplied to different parts within a hydraulic system. This way, the speed of a cylinder or the rotational speed of a hydraulic motor can be controlled. In this video, you'll get an overview of the different types of flow control valves, as well as their application and location within the hydraulic system. Let us first consider this simple hydraulic circuit. The cylinder can be controlled by different valves to control the direction, force, and speed. In general, it can be said that the flow control valves control the speed of a cylinder or the rotational speed of a hydraulic motor. Throttles and orifices are simple components that can control the flow rate across their cross-section. Flow control valves pressure compensated are more complex and can keep the flow rate constant even with a variable load. More about this device later. The function of a flow valve is to reduce the rate of flow in its leg of the circuit. Flow reduction results in speed reduction at the actuator. For an example of an actuator, here is a cylinder. The check valve, which is often already included within the housing, acts like a bypass for the return flow when the direction of the volume flow is reversed. What happens to the volume flow when the flow control valve is closed? After all, our pump delivers approximately the same volume flow because the gears rotate with near continuous speed. Closing the flow control valve leads to added resistance to the hydraulic circuit and therefore increases the pressure. Furthermore, high pressure results in a partial bypassing of oil over the pressure relief valve within the hydraulic power pack. If the flow control valve is totally closed, the pressure relief valve is fully opened. To say it another way, the flow rate of the pump does not become smaller or disappear. The oil flow is only redirected. Please note here our video about the hydraulic power pack. Here, the function of the pump and the pressure relief valve within this power unit is explained in detail. In this experiment, we want to find a relationship between the pressure drop across the throttle and the volume flow. The pressure difference is measured along throttle one, and the second throttle is used to simulate a load. In this experiment, we change the load and system pressure. As you can see, a certain pressure difference equals a certain volume flow. However, the relationship is not linear if the oil flow through a throttle is considered as turbulent. Unfortunately, when the pressure differential changes, due to a change in the input flow or external load, the flow rate also changes. An orifice is simply a disc with a hole. So, in contrast to a throttle, the ratio of length compared to flow diameter is very small, resulting in different behavior within the hydraulic circuit. The graph below shows a comparison of the volume flow between a throttle and an orifice as a function of the pressure difference. As you can see, the volume flow at an ideal throttle with a soft transition from thicker to thinner diameter increase is roughly proportional to the pressure, provided that the flow is maintained as laminar. Regarding the orifice, the viscous fluid friction is very low, and thus the flow rate hardly depends on the viscosity of the oil. This is an advantage. On the other hand, you see a big amount of swirls, especially at the exit point of the orifice. Unfortunately, using a simple throttle leads to change in volume flow when load changes. So if you want to keep the speed of a cylinder or hydraulic motor constant, even with different loads, you should use a pressure compensated flow controlled valve. Or to say it another way, a pressure compensated flow control valve maintains an almost constant flow rate in spite of pressure changes across the valve. But how so? Let's have a look what happens inside this special valve. We 
want to discuss the complex structure regarding the following two cases. First case, when the load becomes bigger, the pressure P2 increases. Now the spring-loaded compensator spool opens and the flow rate can be maintained. Second case, the load becomes smaller, so pressure P2 decreases. Now the compensator spool closes to keep the flow rate constant. For detailed information, let's switch to a schematic view. Consider the control piston in balance. As deduced aside, the pressure drop at the throttle point is independent of pressure P1 or P2, but of constant value. However, this also means that the flow rate must be constant. But how are these flow control valves installed? One method is called meter in. Here, you control the rate of flow to the actuator. Here you see how the flow control valve restricts the volume flow when the cylinder extends. The advantage of meter in is that it is very accurate to a positive load. The problem here is, when the load goes over center, the load becomes negative or overruns and can no longer be controlled by the cylinder. Besides the risk of damage, you get cavitation when the load plumps down and air is sucked in. To overcome this risk, we place the flow control valve at the outlet of the cylinder. We call this method meter out. Now pressure is built up at the outlet side of the cylinder and the even negative load can hold. But be careful. If you close the flow control valve too much, the pressure at the outlet port of the cylinder can rise even to a value above the pressure you get from your hydraulic power pack. How so? This example shows how the cylinder acts like a pressure intensifier. The piston of the cylinder is the link between the inside and outside of the cylinder. We regard the case that the flow control valve is completely closed, perhaps of negligence or unawareness. Because the ring area here is much smaller than the piston area, you can get this high pressure, which can be far above the system pressure. This is a high risk and can lead to dangerous accidents. A high load even worsens this problem. We want to put this circuit up for discussion. Due to the external pressure relief valve installed in series after the cylinder, the cylinder is hydraulically clamped even with a negative load. In addition, a resulting cylinder force for certain applications can be determined by setting the opening pressure of the pressure relief valve to the desired value and thereby determining the counter force on the annular surface of the cylinder. The two check valves are used to bypass the flow valve and the pressure relief valve. A disadvantage can be seen in the additional hydraulic resistance, represented by the pressure relief valve, and the additional costs for a further component. 